The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Dr. I, Jerry Corsi is our guy. Hey, Doc, I got your book on Hitler, too. I'm about halfway through it. I just wanted to tell you that. Hope you like it, Peter. I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to give it to a friend of mine, and then we'll talk. Okay. Um, I remember, uh, by the way, he's a, a Ph.D. from Harvard. Uh, he writes numbers of books. He has been attacked uh, by people for as long as I've known him, and I've known him a decade. And when we began to speak about just who is this 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama, and he was one of the first guys that I heard, hey, talk to Jerry Corsi. And, of course, out of that comes Joel Gilbert and so many other people. And I remember, Doc, I think it was like maybe three and a half, four years ago, the first time you said, and that you'd been to Hawaii, and they you really had, they were really like they treated you in Africa. And you said to me, Peter, there's a new last name. If you would tell the audience what that new last name was, I believe you discovered it first. Yeah, I think I was one of the first to make it public. The uh, Ann Dunham, who's the mother of Obama, on one of her passport applications when she was in Indonesia when Obama was a child, a, a very young child, maybe four years old, ten years old in this span, uh, she applies to essentially, uh, she's removing the name of her child, removing Barack Obama from her passport, and getting him his own passport. Uh, in those days, a mother could have a child put on her passport instead of getting the child a separate passport, and she changes the name of Barack Obama to um, Sori Barka, which is an Indonesian name, S-O-E-B-A-R-K-A-H, and the the form crosses this out, which um, the form indicates you should, you're supposed to do if, in fact, the you're removing the child from your passport, and it's clear that from this that uh, Barry you know, Obama, or now Barry Satoro, uh, the president, as a child, was given somehow or other this Indonesian surname, which strongly suggests that he was given Indonesian citizenship, probably adopted. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's, it was a relevant issue in eligibility mm -hmm. because it could have compromised Barack Obama's eligibility yeah. to be president. Absolutely. Now, what, what's important, and then we'll, we'll push it further. Yes. When you first said that, and it's pronounced soy barca, is that how it's pronounced? Soy barca, yeah. Not that's so how barca. I've been pronounced. Okay. Soy, soy barca. barca. That, that's how they say Indonesian say soy barca. Uh, right. And I've gotten some email this morning say you're mispronouncing the, the the name, and I'm totally capable of that. So with apologies. So it's soy. The e is the e is strong. Soy that's barca. That's how I've that's how okay. I've been taught okay. to say it. I Fair don't enough. know that. Yes, okay. I, I don't know enough Indonesian to know. <laughs> so when that happened, and Jerry became the worst human being. In the history of talk radio, as I say, we were Nazis, we were Klansmen, we were bigots, we were right. racist, we were this, we were that, we were this, we were that. I added silver shirts this morning just to <laughs> okay. put, a, put, a, put an edge on it, right? But we, right. I, we, we were everybody. And because this didn't, this never happened. There was no Soy Barca character. So now, what has turned up? Well, the this association, after uh, Loretta Fuddy died... Um, this religious group, uh, they're often called a sect, which is a subud, S-U-B-U-D. That's how that's, that's pronounced as well? I've been so, saying... Su, subud. Say it's like S-O-E-B-O-O-D is how you say right, it. Let me say Let me write that down. S subud. <clears throat> Excuse me, subud is how they say it. Subud. Okay. All right, gotcha. And it's named after a, uh, a guy, right? Indonesian Muslim named Muhammad, etc., etc., subud who created this, he, he was born in 1901, he died in 1987, and he created this cult, which was a um, sort of a meditation, although it's a very free-form meditation, in which you're supposed to identify with the God force, and the God force is supposed to give you instructions or center your life. And they, the Sabud members meditate in groups, there's only about 20,000 of them in the world, but... Um, Loretta Fuddy, the Hawaii Department of Health head, who's certified, or she went in and in, uh, into this position like in March 2011, and by April, like within two months, she is certifying that Obama's mm -hmm. appointment, his birth certificate is that they issue in the White House a long form, and 
on April 27, 2011, I'm about to publish a book on questioning, you know, where's mm-hmm. the real birth certificate? Yeah, birth I remember that, sure, quite well. And, okay, and she is the one who certified it. Well, mm-hmm. Saboud the, comes out and says she's a member. In fact, not only was she a member, she was the, you know, the grand poobah, the grand head of the Saboud cult in America for years 2006 through 2008. And to further verify it, um, you know, researchers very quickly found a Honolulu Advertiser article from 2011 with a picture of Loretta Fuddy meditating at a Sabood center. Mm-hmm. And this was, you know, circulated around the mm-hmm. Internet very broadly. What was, if I may, and between, and again, that, that book that was a horrible book, Janie Scott's biography. Yes, uh-huh. uh, You know, and anybody who read, and I did, A Singular Woman, The Untold Story of Barack Obama's Mother, that became a New York Times bestseller done by a woman by the name of Janie Scott, and uh, Jack Cashel is an expert on this, but, it, I mean, the whole book is just not true. It's like everything else. But what is the relationship between Barack Obama's mother and the, sub, the subdued cult and um, and Loretta Fuddy? Well, Subud comes out and has a, they have a newsletter in 2011, right after Fuddy's appointed, and they're saying, boy, now we've got one of ours in a position to help Obama. And by the way, her mother is associated with Sabood and Dunham. And um, that was kind of an anonymous letter written into this publication, a Sabood publication, and published. So it kind of suggested that there was a relationship. And the evidence was this Jenny, Jenny, uh, Jenny Scott's uh, Scott book. Yeah, book. right. Yeah, she talks and, about it. Yeah. Well, she talks about a couple of instances where Ann Dunham appoints Sabood members right. to teaching positions. And it's clear... I mean, I also know Wayne Madsen, who was, you know, former Naval Intelligence, and Wayne is in Washington. He writes a newsletter. Mm-hmm. Wayne spent a, a month in Indonesia in 2011 tracking down the Obamas. And um, this, the Sabood cult is one that Ann Dunham had to be aware of mm-hmm. in Indonesia. It would, it's, it's unimaginable she didn't know about it. Um, and I think she had sympathy for it because she produces this whole micro banking initiative with Ford in Indonesia and all through that part of the world, uh, at the same time that Subud himself, the founder of the sect, is um, instituting world banking as an initiative for the group. Mm-hmm. They're just too much on theme together. Yeah. Uh, and that I'm never affirmed or claimed or you know, participated actively in the set. I can't find that Ann Dunham participated in any religion actively. Was she linked to Loretta Fuddy? Um, I don't know that the two even knew each other. All right. It's Sabood who's claiming the association. Well, if the truth, I mean, one, in that Honolulu Advertiser article, Sabood yeah. comes in Hawaii about the same time that she does. Well, and, you know, it is, it's, it, she knew, she had to have known about Sabood simply because Anyone involved with New Age religions at the time, and you know, one of the people she hired from Sabood in Indonesia, she was very close to, and this guy was very prominent in Sabood. He would have been talking about it all the time. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Everybody, you know, that's his reputation. Uh, the, the key part about it is that the Sabood sect changes names. So, for instance, um, Loretta Fuddy had his new name, Delilah, who would, nobody ever she heard about. Changes her it. name. That's right. Yeah. And so the the argument is that if Ann Dunham was coming into this cult, it would have been a opportunity. Ann Dunham changes her name, which has never been explained. She starts spelling her name instead of S O E T O R O S U T O R O, unexplained, and um, she changes Barack Obama's name, which is the kind of thing the cult members tend to do. Yeah, that's true. Again, that's yeah. not proof she was part of the cult. There could be other reasons she changed all these names. Jerry, but it is very interesting and very suspicious. This is one of the best guys. It's uh, 9 after the hour, 7.09. Please go to the website, 710knus.com, and follow along at home. You can see these 1968 apps. Now, as you and and the greats have said, Anne's 65 passport, like so many other things, has been destroyed. But right. if, if we look at these two, the 68 app that's up on the website, 710knus.com, there's two pages. Yes. Now, in the, we have Stanley Ann's 68 app to extend her 65 passport, which has been destroyed for an additional two years. That's, right. that's the first figure. On the second yes. page of the app, Ann moves to exclude her son. Correct. And that's where the name Sue Soibakran shows up. Shows up. 
Yes. What does it mean? It means that it, she was trying to get a separate path. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.